morning. praise hallelujah i'm glad this morning that we serve a living god aren't you amen, amen. Yes. i'm glad he's no longer in the tomb yes. i'm glad we're serving a god that has eyes to see and ears to hear and hands to do and amen feet to go amen i'm serving a living saving god amen praise the lord will glory 
Praise the Lord. You may be seated just a moment. We want to thank you for uh, being faithful to the house of God. We have some that are out uh, today. Uh, they spent all day marrying their daughter off and uh, got that all accomplished. And so I, they're taking a sabbatical today. I know, I'm sure they, they needed it. Amen. After all the festivities. And so uh, we uh, uh, want to thank you that are here today and, and appreciate your faithfulness. And I tell you, you made a great choice attending the, the greatest church in Malvern, Arkansas. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We got some of the greatest people in, in Hot Spring County, Grant County, and all kinds of counties. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I do uh, want to remind you, uh, we're still in the midst of our construction. The ladies' uh, restroom is, is uh, available. And so uh, at, at this time, the men, if you would be sure and kind of go around and go down to the, the side doors open so those restrooms are available for the men. But uh, we're in the midst of that, and uh, we're uh, uh, just uh, anticipating great things. Got a, a lot in store for So be in prayer for, for Bob and Mel and all of these guys that are doing all the work. Brother Chad, amen. The pastor, I'm just sitting around looking, you know, and watching. Amen. But these guys are doing all the work. So be in sure and be in prayer for them. Uh, also want to remind the prime timers, our fishing trip is coming up uh, this Friday, June the 19th. Uh, the bus will be leaving here at 9 o'clock. Be sure and bring you a brown bag lunch uh, and bring enough for your pastor. And, and uh, you know, because I like to eat out of other people's bags. Amen. See, your chicken may be better than my chicken. I don't know. I have to try it. And so, uh, and bring you a chair uh, for that as well. Be sure and bring plenty of crickets and worms and all that stuff in your fishing pole. Also, the Women's Ministry Park Outreach is uh, coming up this Saturday at uh, 10 till 1130. And if you need any more information on that, you can see Sister Kaylin. Sister Kaylin, wave. Amen. And so uh, you can see her after service. Also, uh, uh, give yourself away outreach, homeless outreach. Uh, we are partnering with them because we care of partnering with them in donating goods and services. Uh, and so all donations uh, items need to be here by June uh, the 23rd. Bring them to the parsonage and see if you need any more information on this. I think there are some forms list of items that are needed and uh, and if you need any more information you can see Sister Norma or Chris and Nikki. Chris wave everybody knows Chris I'm sure okay <laughs> uh, now I said that in good humor okay all right amen everybody knows Chris and Nikki they're a great part of our church and so if you need any more information you can see them also, at this time, Pastor Dylan has an announcement he'd like to make. Don't know our youth pastor look nice today, I'm telling you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So on June 27th, immediately following um, the evening service, there will be no choir practice, correct? No, but you're going to do before prayer? Before prayer. So, Okay, I'll let you make that announcement. Um, so... Immediately following the uh, June 27th evening service, prayer service, the youth we're we're going to be doing an ice cream social. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have chocolate, vanilla, uh, strawberry, and even that nasty butter pecan. I don't see how y'all eat that. Woo. Makes me cringe thinking about it. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna have all kinds of toppings so you can drown out that butter pecan taste with chocolate and whatever you need. Um, and we're, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking up donations for Speed the Light. Uh, for those that don't know what Speed the Light is, it is a student-led missions giving project. Um, all of the AG youth ministries or youth groups across Arkansas and across the country, uh, they give to Speed the Light. And Speed the Light takes that money and they equip, they, give, they provide necessary equipment for missionaries all across the world so that they can spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a mission right there. Um, so 
our youth group this year, so let me tell you, last year our youth group goal was $600, and we got it. So this year, I told them, let's go big. So we set a goal of $3,000 for this year. Amen. So I told my students that if we reached our goal, I'd shave my beard and my legs. So, so right now, we're sitting out about $1,100 right now. So uh, June 27th, make sure you bring your $100 bills so that we can, we can reach our goal. Amen? Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I believe we can raise that, don't y'all? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Show my, give my hand of appreciation. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, glory. Amen. Let's stand. Let's invite the presence of the Lord in our service. Gracious Father, we thank you for that privilege, Lord, to be in this house today with our brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray, God, that you'd minister, Lord, your anointing, your power, and your blessing. Lord, that every word that's spoken, every song that's sang would be, Lord, under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Oh, sweet Holy Ghost, we invite you to come and to move, oh, Lord, and to minister in this place. I pray, God, that you speak to our hearts, oh, God. And, Lord, minister and glorify your precious name, Lord, in these lives. And, Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Turn around and give everybody a big wave, amen. God bless you. Brother Bob, would you come?
let me walk, bless the Lord, in the way that I have gone, leading straight to a land above, giving cheer everywhere, to the sad and alone, fill my way every day with love, oh, fill my Of my Savior and God, never let me in darkness roll. Keep my path free from wrath and my soul satisfied. Fill my way every day with love. Oh, fill my way every day with love. As I walk with that heavenly dove, let me go all the while with a song. will be yours, and I'll travel no more, but abide in my home above. Let me sing, bless the King, all the way to the shore, fill my way every day with love. Oh, fill my way every day with love, as I walk with that heavenly dove. Let me go all the while with a song.
Are you ready? Amen. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I got my ticket punched. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. Amen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go commercial. Amen. I'm not gonna go, amen, that's second class, but I'm going first class. When the trumpet sounds, there's gonna be a resurrection of those who have went on before. And there's going to be a rescue of us who are alive and remain. And then there's going to be a great reunion, hallelujah, with those who have gone before. Hallelujah. Give him a big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Yes, I'll find a way of glory. I'm going to find a way. Yes, when with a sweet Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us through this old lost and dying world. And one of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. Hallelujah. We're going to leave this old world behind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Would you stand? We want to pray for those that have need of prayer this morning. Uh, Doug Langley and Callie Brashears and Lena McClung, uh, Sister Ann Hammond, uh, Dina Payne, Tommy Stiles. We're glad he's able to be with us today. Amen. Pastor Roger Wall needs our prayers this morning. And so if you would be sure and and say a special prayer for Pastor uh, Roger Wall. Uh, Also, Wanda Bradbury's not feeling well today. Uh, Continue to pray for Steve Hoke. 
uh, Smitty Lackey, Sister Janice Thornton, and Missy Smith, uh, Eddie Benfield, a good friend of mine, needs our prayers. Uh, we're glad that Benji is able to be with us. Amen. But be sure and keep him in your prayers. He's uh, in the midst of having tests run and situations in his life. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. We know a healer, and he's in the house. We know a healer, and he's in the house. Tracy Estes, that's Tim's brother. Remember him in your prayers. Also, Tabitha Dyer and her family needs our prayers, and, and Crystal Hodges needs our prayers today. Amen. Also, continue to remember our shut-in, Sister Betty Rogers and Sister Loretta uh, Hughes. And if you would, let's, let's join together. If you're here this morning and you have a need that you would love, lift your hand. Amen. Lift your hand. How many, how many is here that would say that the church stood on your behalf when you were sick and the Lord touched your body? Amen. Amen. So we owe a debt. Amen. To those patriarchs and our brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's, amen, let's carry these before the throne of grace this morning right now. Gracious Father, we come to you knowing that you, O oh God, are the author and the finisher of our faith. You're the creator of these bodies. And so, Lord, if you're the creator, you can recreate. Lord, you can recreate. Oh, Lord, you can take nothing and make something. Lord, you can turn the situation and the circumstance around. Lord, you can change, oh Lord, the outcome of the issue. Hallelujah. You can stop it in its tracks. And Lord, we just present these right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you just pour your power, your blessing, and your glory. Lord, we believe your word and therefore speak. By your stripes, we are healed. By your stripes, these that are sick, we call them healed right now in the name of Jesus. We call them healed in the name of Jesus. We speak to that situation. We speak to that issue. And we command it, amen, to divert and leave that body alone. In Jesus' precious name, we put our faith, our trust, and our confidence in the provision of our Lord and our Savior. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you. We praise you. Lord, touch them, O oh God, and minister. And Lord, I pray that you would have your hand and your will in your way in this service today. Lord, as we give you all the praise and all the glory, in Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Lisa.
Would you lift your hands and us worship him together? Hallelujah. Lord, we worship and we praise and exalt you and stole you in this place. But Lord, you are he who is high and lifted up, O oh God. You're the one who is preeminent, O oh Lord, above all. And Lord, you're the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. You're he who is on the throne. You're he, amen, who has all say so. You're the yes and the amen, hallelujah. Lord, we just rejoice in you. We praise and exalt you, extol you, almighty God. Oh, Lord, I praise you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Oh, we bless you and we praise you. Oh, glory to God. Sing that chorus one more time. Hallelujah. Sing it, choir. I exalt thee. Exalt him, church. Exalt him. Exalt him in this place. says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. In other words, exalt him above your situation. Exalt him above your circumstance. Exalt him above all the five physical senses that you have in life. Amen. And put your faith and your trust in the one that cannot be seen because those things that cannot be seen are eternal. Amen? Praise the Lord. Will glory. Amen. Thank you. Didn't this choir do an awesome job this morning? Musicians, I'm telling you, praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. My text this morning is uh, a little lengthy, and so I want to give you the comfort uh, to uh, be seated here today. Amen. Will glory. I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord is in the house. His presence is in this house. I tell you, I, I really love the, uh, the choices of songs that were uh, made by our leaders today. Brother Bob done an outstanding job in uh, selection, song selection and Sister Lisa. And uh, I tell you, I just appreciate it when when God lines things up, don't you, aren't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you again for being in the house of God. And I see Jerry Smith back there. Thank you for coming, brother, and Terry and Mary Knighting. Amen. These, these folks are from Grant County. Amen. Grant County. We appreciate them for coming, Sister uh, uh, Sandy and, and Carl. And Chad, I'm sorry. Uh, Brother Chad, I should remember that name, shouldn't I? <laughs> Amen. But uh, thank you for choosing to be here today. Well, glory. Now, if I missed anybody, I apologize. But Ezekiel chapter 16, and we'll start reading with verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 1. It says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled, swaddled at all. No eye pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person. 
in the day that thou wast born. And when I passed by thee and I saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. I have, com I have caused thee to multiply, <coughs> excuse me, to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Now when I pass by thee and look upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God. And thou becamest mine. Then washed I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. And I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with broad work and shod thee with badger skins. And I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put uh, bracelets upon thine hands and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thine ears and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus wast thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk. Broidered work, thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. And thou renowned uh, went forth, and thou renowned went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect. Through my comeliness, which I had put up on thee, saith the Lord God. I want to minister this morning on the subject, the wonderful grace of God. The wonderful grace of God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we come here today to minister your word, your holy, inspired Lord, your holy word, that infallible word that is sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you would anoint this messenger and help me speak your word with boldness. Lord, I pray the unction of the Holy Spirit, the glory and the anointing, Lord, would fall upon me, O oh God, that it would not be, Lord, the voice of my own, but it would be the voice, O oh Lord, from heaven. Lord, that would speak to the hearts and the lives of these that are here today. Lord, I pray that you would minister right now and prepare every heart and every life, O oh God. Lord, let us have ears to hear what your Spirit would say to the church in this day, this hour, and this moment. I pray, God, that you would move, O oh God, and touch. And if there be one here in this place that their heart is not right before you, Lord, that you would minister, O oh God. Lord, minister with your blessing, O oh God. We ask, O oh Lord, that the power of conviction would fall in this house, O oh Lord. And Lord, minister to us, and Lord, and to measure our hearts, O oh God. Help us, O oh Lord Jesus, Lord, to be, O oh Lord, in your will and in your way as we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. In our text this morning, God is dealing with with a backslidden nation, the nation of Israel. And the city of Jerusalem had slipped back into worshiping the idols of the past. And the Lord is trying to draw them back to Him and is reminding them of the former condition when He found them and poured out His wonderful grace upon them. And just like with you and I, amen, we uh, who once were... Uh, once fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath. But with a divine intervention, God passed by and he saw us cast aside and left to die in our sin. And he saved us and made us able to become sons and daughters of God. He gave us the privilege to come before the throne of grace and to call him Abba Father, to come and present our needs and our requests to him personally. 
You see, he brought us out of the first Adam, which was our flesh, the fleshly birth, the birth that was formed of sin. And he brought us into the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ, amen, the Spirit, amen, that will lead us through eternity. God's grace is what made you, amen, who you are today. Paul said one time in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. You see, it is his grace, amen, that has made it possible for each and every one of us to be saved, sanctified, and to be filled with the Spirit. It is His grace, His undeserving favor that was released upon us, amen, and made it possible for us to live an overcoming life as we were brought forth and able to receive the blood sacrifice that was made on the cross of Calvary for our eternal souls. Oh, listen, saints, we owe a debt Amen, that we couldn't pay. Amen, that Jesus paid a debt for us that he did not owe. Amen, it was all because of his grace, because of his love. He passed by one day. He saw us in our saddened condition. He saw us in our worthlessness. He saw us in our selfishness. And he, amen, went to the cross of Calvary. He gave his life, amen, as a redeemed redemption for us to redeem us from our past, to save us from our sin, to make us a new creature in Christ Jesus. And as we came in faith and received that provision and that blessing, hallelujah, he made us a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things passed away and all things became new. Glory to God. Oh, listen, saints of God. Amen. My wife, amen. She wouldn't marry me until I got saved. Amen. Now, that was a, that was a, you know, a little a bribe there, I think. But I want you to know when I got saved, I got saved from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I got in, amen, with all my elbows and knees and everything. I didn't leave anything out. I wanted all of Jesus. I wanted everything he, amen, had to offer. I heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen. I found myself praying, oh God, if this is for me, then I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. And he filled me with the Holy Ghost. It was because of that wonderful, for grace, hallelujah. And Paul, I want you to know, amen, that as I have trekked through this life, there's been times when I've failed. There's been times when I've faltered. There's been times when I have made the mistakes, amen. But when I come back to that throne of grace, when I come back, amen, to that place, amen, and come back to the Lord, he has always been there, and he's been faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness all oh, saints of God I want you to know today I don't know the condition of your heart I don't know where you are in the Lord but I do know this amen he's a God that is playing this service today and he's brought you here for such a time as this that you might measure your life measure your thoughts measure your words measure your actions and make sure that they are lining up with the will in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Would you give him praise here this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, listen, he brought us out of our past, amen, to bring us in to his wonderful glory. Amen. It is, amen, God that has done this. His grace is what has saved you. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. And then the grace of God is what keeps us. 1 Peter 1 and 5 says, Amen, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And His grace is what helps us. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says, And He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather, uh, rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest up on me. And then, amen, his grace, 
amen, has, is what has cleansed us and washed us and purged us and made me who I am today. Oh, verses 4 and 5 of our text. I want to read this in the message translation. It says, On the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. You weren't bathed and cleaned up. You weren't rubbed with salt. You weren't wrapped in a baby's blanket. No one cared a fig for you. No one did one thing to care for you tenderly in these ways. You were thrown out in a vacant lot and left there dirty and unwashed and a newborn nobody wanted amen listen we can see amen that the grace of god was needed in this situation you see this infant was helpless and hopeless it was born and cast aside it was discarded and disowned thrown away in a sad condition just like you and i without the grace of god we were born but not alive, in humanity but most miserable. We were unclean, uncared for, unclothed, and unclaimed. We were lost and undone, shapen in iniquity. Our righteousness was as filthy rags. Paul said in Romans 3 and 10, There is none righteous, no, not one. David said in Psalms 142 and 4, He said, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. No a refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. You see, we stood naked in our rebellion and in our sin. And Hebrews 4 and 13 says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do I want you to know that you may have your secret sin hid you may have amen that little sin that you held on to and that little temptation that you've clutched on to for years and years but there is nothing hid in the eyes of the Lord amen you are naked it before his eyes he knows amen every motive he knows every thought and every word oh we needed amen what we didn't have we needed a relationship with our god ephesians 2 and 12 says that at that time you were without christ being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope and without god in this world oh listen we were lost we couldn't save ourselves we couldn't bring life to our dead hearts we couldn't get to god on our own we were left helpless and hopeless but thank god amen there's another chapter of the book i'm thankful today amen there's another chapter in this book amen of our lives because our heavenly father had compassion on us and god's grace was given to us all oh, verses 6 through 9 i want to look at this in the new king james version it says, And when I passed by you and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you in your blood, live. I made you a thrive like a plant in the field, and you grew and matured and became very beautiful. Your breasts were formed, your hair grew, but you were naked and bare. When I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed, your time was a time time of love so I spread my wings over you and covered your nakedness yes I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you and you became mine says the Lord God then I washed you in water yes I thoroughly washed off your blood and I anointed you with Oh, you see the picture here is one passing by who sees this child and stops to rescue it from certain death and that's exactly what our Lord and Savior has done in our lives we were among men most miserable we were lost and undone headed to a devil's hell we had no hope we had no help we had no peace and no love and no joy our lives were amen 
were wrapped up in the things of, of temporary. We were wrapped up in the things of this world. Amen. And, but Jesus came. He came, glory to God. And he passed by. And he saw us in our wretched condition. And as we cried out to him, amen, and made one step, then he made the other nine running. He was just like the prodigal son's father. Amen. He saw him. And when he saw him coming, he went running to meet him. That's the way our Heavenly Father has done as we have come through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and as we have received the provision and the price that was paid to redeem us and to set us free as we have accepted Him as our Lord and our Savior and our soon coming King. Glory to God. I want you to know amen it all is all because of His wonderful grace. Would you give Him praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, amen, he came to us. He had compassion on us. He commanded us to live, and he covered us with his covering. Amen. I, when I read this, I thought about Boaz. Amen. Amen. When Ruth was laying there at his feet, amen, he covered her. Amen. With his blanket. Amen. With his robe. Amen. He covered her. In other words, he was saying, you're mine. I'm taking you. Amen. As my wife. Glory to God. Jesus Christ has covered us with his his precious blood. He's given us a robe of righteousness. He's crowned us with righteousness. He's put jewels upon our, our hands and our, our feet and our ears. He's jeweled us, amen, with his blessing, his glory, and his power. Glory to God. Oh, he came to us. He made a covenant with us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ and has cleansed us, cured us, and concentrated us. Luke 19 and 10 says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and save which was lost. He came to seek and to save which was lost. You see, when I was lost and undone, I wasn't looking for him, but he was looking for me. Amen. When I was running around doing my thing, amen, I wasn't looking for him, but he was looking for me. When I was using his name in vain, I wasn't looking for him, but he was looking for me. And not only, Brother Terry, was he looking for me, but he was calling my name. Yeah. Amen. In the midnight hour, Brother David, when I couldn't occupy my thoughts, amen, when my thoughts, amen, all seemed to go, amen, to that voice that I was hearing call and wooing me to an altar of prayer. As I knew in that midnight hour that my mom and my dad was calling my name before the throne of grace, I could hear, amen, the hounds of heaven. I could hear, amen, amen, heaven. I don't know if it's Gabriel or Michael. Go over to the back of that truck and open that dog box and turn those hounds out. Amen. I don't know who done it, but I could hear them. Amen. And they were pursuing me. They were after me, Chester. They were after me. Hallelujah. They made my life miserable. I was lost. I was messed up. And I finally came to, amen, not, amen, the end of the rope. But I got down past the knot, down to the fringe. But I was holding on to that fringe. And when I saw that there was nothing in this world that could help me, there was nothing in this world that could quieten, amen, the voice of heaven and the voice of our Lord and Savior. Amen. I reached up and grabbed that knot, and I started climbing. I started pulling. I started dragging. And the moment I started coming up, Oh, listen, there was a big hand that came down. I want you to know the very night, amen, that I had gotten saved. That morning I'd gotten saved. But that very night, amen, I was laying there asleep, amen, and peacefully in sleep. All of a sudden, amen, I went to a dream, Carol. And in that dream, I was in a bunch of muck and mire up to my neck. I couldn't get out. It was thick. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't. There was nothing to grab a hold of, nothing to hold on to. But there was a big hand reached down. A big hand reached down. And I grabbed the 
hand, hold to that big finger, just like, amen, Feeney done, Pastor Roger, amen, he grabbed the hold of that finger, and he pulled me out of the miry clay. He brought me up out of that place, and he put me by his side. He's established my steps. He's ministered to my heart, amen, glory to God, and he is the one, amen, that I'm serving today. He's the one that I'm talking about today. He is the Father of grace. Would you give him praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I was working for the wages of sin, but he gave me the gift of life. He covered me with his righteousness and adopted me as his own. Hebrews 11 and 16 says, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. He's prepared for them a city. Oh, listen, I tell you, how many owns, owns a home? Hey, man, you know how much trouble it is. Hey, man, Brother Bob, to keep that home up. Hey, man, when the roof starts to leak and, hey, man, the framework starts to sag or, or the sheet rocks turns colors or, or this or that, we have to continually work, hey, man, to keep that house up. But I want you to know it don't matter, hey, man, what kind of situation you have. It don't matter what kind of abode you have. You may be living in a tent or a camper or a car, but our Heavenly Father is preparing a place for us. It is uh, walls of jasper, streets of gold. It's adorned with the jewels, amen. Oh, but most of all, Jesus is there. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. I don't know whether to run, jump, or bust wide open. His glory is in here. Hallelujah. You see, he became the sacrificial lamb, our redeemer who was saved from our sins. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And his grace, it changed us. It changed us. Verse 10, starting there in our text. It says, I clothed you in embroidery cloth and gave you sandals of badger skin. I clothed you with fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with ornaments. I put bracelets on your wrist and chains on your neck. I put a jewel in your nose, earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown upon your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver, and your clothing was of fine linen, silk, and embroidery cloth. You ate pastry of fine flour, honey, and oil. You were exceedingly bountiful and exceeded uh, to royalty, succeeded to royalty. Your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty, for it was perfect through my splendor, which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord. You see, he clothed us, he cleansed us, he crowned us, and he changed us. He gave us a garment of salvation, a robe of righteousness. He adorned us as a bride adorns herself with jewels for her bridegroom. And just like the father gave to his prodigal son in Luke 15 and 22, amen, it says, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. For my son was lost, but now he is found. Hallelujah, our God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Oh, listen, in this chapter, and in this book, amen, we know that if you'll continue reading, he is confronting Jerusalem. He's confronting a backslidden nation. Amen. He's looking, amen, and he's wooing, and he's calling. He's pouring his love. He's giving a message to draw them just as he had before and when they received their first love from the Lord. He's wooing them back, amen, a backslidden nation. 
And I wonder this morning, how is your relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? Are you continuing your walk with the Lord? Or are you slipping back into the old ways? You see, the Word of God, which was breathed by God, inspired by God, and written by man. These words, amen, are, are, are used as a plumb line are used as a, a level that we can gauge our hearts and our lives. And I want you, amen, this very moment to begin to think about your relationship with the Lord. You see, the Lord didn't come. He didn't die on the cross, amen, to have a girlfriend or uh, to have a girlfriend. He came to marry the bride. He came to receive, amen, and to have an intimate and a right relationship with us. Amen. So we must gauge our lives, guard, uh, guard our lives. We must examine our lives that we are staying true to him and to his ways. Has church become just a habit? Are you just coming, amen, because of obligation to grandma and grandpa? Have you replaced your time and prayer with other things? Have you lost interest in reading God's holy word? Do you still have passion and desire to share your faith with the lost? Do you get irritated inside when others begin the conversation about Jesus and want to talk about righteous and holy things? Amen. Have you lost your joy for Christian service? Do you find yourself being critical and finding fault with others? Have you become selfish rather than a, a cheerful, giving heart? Listen, examine your heart and your life today. Amen. He has done all of this so that we can live, amen, righteously and holy before him, so that we can prepare ourselves to live eternity with him. You see, the very Word of God says that we are to pray that His will be done in earth. His will be done in earth. Amen. In you, we are made up of earth so that His will will be done in us. And the only way His will can be done in us if we keep our lives spotless and under the blood of Jesus. Oh, listen, God sent the prophet to Jerusalem that day to warn them and to call them and to minister to their hearts. And I want you to know this morning that God has sent, amen, the prophet, the preacher, the pastor here this morning for you to examine your heart, examine your life, and make sure that you're ready. Amen. Make sure that your heart and your life is ready to hear the trumpet. Oh, listen, you've been saved. Amen. But you may not Amen. Feel like it. You may not act like it. You may not be living like it. Listen, God has sent me here to call you and to plead with you and to woo you back to the throne of grace. Think about what he brought you from, how he has saved you and delivered you. Think about the love and the joy and the peace that you once had. Think about the rest and the satisfaction of having your sins forgiven. Think about it. Amen. You see, the auction block of sin, it will demand its price. It will demand its price. Sister Norma, listen, I read a story how that God sent a prophet by the name of Hosea, sent a prophet down, down there to that street corner where all of them hung out sent him down there and said, I want you to go down there and take a wife. So Hosea went down to the street corner, and he looked, and he saw a lady by the name of Gomer. And he went to her, and he took her as his wife. He brought her, amen, and she, amen, became his wife. She had a child. Then she had another child, and she had a third child. She had been coming to church. She had been doing good. But there was something, amen, that she had never turned a loose of. There was something that she had never let go. You see, the enemy 
will always try to get you to hold on to that one sin that you loved from your past, that one thing from the old days. He'll try to get you, amen, to hang on to that. And not only hang on to it, but he will present it before you every day. He'll present it before you every day so that you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision to bring into captivity every thought and intent into the obedience of Christ. It is your decision. It is your will that will be done in that situation. Oh, listen, Gomer couldn't let it go. And she left Hosea. She left her kids. And she went back to the street corner. Oh, listen, it was fun for a while. It was fun for a while because everybody was paying money for her beauty. Everyone was paying money for her beauty. But as time went on, amen, and then years passed by, and her beauty began to fade away. And all of a sudden, amen, she could have, no one desired to have time with her. No one desired her any longer. And she found herself on an auction block being sold as a slave. Being sold as a slave. But God spoke to Hosea after years had went by. And he said, Hosea, just as he would tell the Holy Spirit, he said, go get your wife. Go get Gomer. So here Hosea goes. He knows where to look. He knows the place. Here he goes. And as he rounds the corner, he hears the auctioneer. Somebody open the bid. Somebody give me a bid. Somebody open the bid. No one says a word. No one says a word. No one desires her. She's cast aside. She's of no worth to anyone. But Hosea shouts, I'll give a hundred. I'll give two hundred. I'll give three hundred. I'll give everything I've got. Just give me my wife. Give me my wife. Jesus, Jesus has sent us here today. Sent us here today. And he wants to remind you, I've given everything I have. I've given everything I have. I still desire you. I still want you. I still love you. It don't matter how far, it don't matter what you've done, he still loves you. It's like the old violin builder who knows the worth of the violin. Your maker and builder, your heavenly father knows your worth. And he's shouting this morning, I've paid the price. I'll give it all. I'll give it all. Will you come and return to me once again? And the words of John and Revelations 3 and 20 are ringing out this morning. He's saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. You see, the Bible said there were ten virgins. There were ten virgins. Five were foolish. Five were wise. All ten had lamps. All ten at one time had come into the spirit of the presence of God. All ten of one time had the oil of God. But something happened to five, and they let the oil run out. And when the call came forth, when the knock at the door was there, they could not enter in because they had let it aspire. Their hearts were not right. Listen, God 
is speaking of his wonderful grace this morning. His wonderful grace. Would you stand? Would you stand? I want to know, are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Listen, we're not promised another second. We're not promised another breath. As I read in the Word of God, He's the one who gave the breath in the Garden of Eden. Amen. And He's the one who can take it back. Amen. We're not promised another moment. Are you ready? Are you ready? Listen, I want to open these altars. I tell you, as I was preparing this message, I had to examine my heart, Sister Carol. I had to examine my life. And listen, there were some things I fell at the altar. I fell at my altar and I began to pray. I began to see some things that maybe I was slack at. Amen. I want you to examine your heart. Examine your heart. I'm telling you, you can notice the first moment of this service today. His presence is here. His glory is here. This is a foreordained service. This is a, a word for right now. Listen, God is speaking to your heart and to your life. These altars are open. And I want us all to find us a place to pray. I want us all, amen, to find us a place to pray. If you can't come and kneel around these altars, amen, then, then there at your seat, wherever. But I want all of us to cry out to the Lord, to cry out to God in this place this morning and make sure your heart is right with God. Those of you that would come, and if you desire for your pastor to pray with you and to pray for you, would you come and stand here? Would you come and allow us to pray? But I want every heart and every life to be examined in this place. Amen. By this word of God today. Amen. And amen. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, you've never accepted Him. He's drawing you just like He did me on that Sunday morning. He's saying, come. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life this morning. Would you come? Would you come? Find you a place to pray. Find you a place to pray.